Hello and welcome uh, to English lectures by Usman Hanif. Uh, usually, I have been making videos related to FSC and BSc, but this is the first instance of creating a video on uh, MA English, especially being uh, asked to do so by some of my students, one of whom is my cousin uh, who studies in Namal, Lahore. Uh, we are going to discuss in this particular lecture about a novel but before I move on I would like to request you to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that whenever I create another video uh, regarding your uh, you know interest in the lectures in which you are interested or the topics you may be interested in you should uh, get the alert or the update let's move to the uh, novel Joseph Andrews by Henry Fielding. Uh, before going into the story, uh, it is important to know who the writer of the novel is, who is Henry Fielding, because uh, there might appear no question in the paper about Henry Fielding, but once you have done your masters, uh, you might be sitting in interview uh, or you might be appearing for a written test for lectureship or for any other exam in which they might ask you about uh, Henry Fielding. Uh, I don't want you to get exposed there. You need to know about the writer. Uh, they do ask sometimes about the when the writer was born or when he died about his life story. Uh, uh, furthermore, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, when you want to understand literature, you also need to look at the life of the person who produced that particular literature. I will try to use Urdu as well because uh, many students desire that I use uh, Urdu as well just to make things intelligible and easier to grasp. Uh, so therefore there are two reasons which is why you must learn about the writer or the author. Uh, Henry Fielding was an English person. He was born in England and he uh, uh, lived in London, the capital of England. Uh, he was born in 1707, as is written on the slide before you. Uh, if he was born in 1707, it means he was an 18th century English writer. Uh, and he died in 1754. It means he did not have a long life. It was a decent life to live. Uh, remember, uh, English novel originated in 18th century. It means the novel in English language and Henry Fielding both were born simultaneously or they were novel and Henry Fielding both were contemporaries. Okay. Uh, he is called Henry Fielding is called father of English novel also because he was one of the first few people who tried to write novels uh, in English, right? Before uh, Henry Fielding, there was hardly any worth mentioning uh, uh, creativity uh, which could be called novel. Although there was a, a person or two who tried their hand on writing novel. Uh, but uh, if somebody was successful in making significant impact on literature, it was Henry Fielding who did that. Uh, if we go on with his life, he was a jobless person, which means he was impoverished, he was poor. He studied law and then became lawyer and magistrate, which means uh, he became public prosecutor or vakile sarkar. So uh, this is his academic background that he studied law. Let's move on. Uh, Henry Fielding had great sense of humor and satire. You will find that uh, the novel that we are discussing at hand right now is humorous and satirical. We will talk about the uh, elements of satire and elements of humor as we go on with this lecture. And remember this is uh, this lecture alone is not going to provide all and everything about Joseph Andrews or Henry Fielding. Uh, it is a series and uh, this is just the first episode of the series that we are going to uh, create, right? So, we will discuss what are the elements of satire and humor in his writings, particularly Joseph Andrews. Uh, he invented mechanism of modern novel. 
so he was not only the father of english novel but he invented uh, of how a modern novel looks like for example a modern novels one particular quality is that its plot is mostly vague if you have read uh, drama uh, tragedy because um, before uh, henry fielding shakespeare had already died and had produced um, uh, content or literature of great impact containing uh, tragedies and comedies so before novel these things were being tried by the people you could see that if you have read any of the modern dramas and if you have read any classical drama like those written by shakespeare you'll find the difference that modern drama is uh, it has vague plot in the same way modern novel also has vague plot and uh, if you look at the classical uh, uh, drama that has very compact and concrete uh, plot for example uh, uh, oedipus rex is a classical drama okay modern novels example can be taken as the caretaker or the waiting for godot right so you could just uh, make associations or analogies yourself as well uh henry fielding's sister was also an author her name was sara uh and henry fielding lived a lived a very poor life uh if you are going to read this novel joseph andrews remember the full name is not joseph andrews the full name of novel is the history of adventures of joseph andrews and of his friend mr abraham adams so this is the full name of the novel and uh, this novel was called by fielding as comic epic in prose comic is something funny yes this novel does have elements of fun for example the character whose name is mentioned in the title of the novel mr abraham adams he was a forgetful person he kept forgetting everything and his forgetfulness creates fun comic comedy or humor and epic is something epic is a poem okay epic is a poem of long length and uh, it not only has a main plot but also subplots so uh, remember this joseph andrews novel uh, is comedy it has long length with sub subplots and he also says it's comic epic poem in prose now remember uh, one of the definitions offered for poetry is that poetry should not just rhyme it's not compulsory that poetry will called be poetry will be called poetry if only it rhymes uh, you know sometimes poetry does not rhyme for example blank verse or free verse does not rhyme but the, that is still called poetry so it doesn't mean uh, that uh, the for poetry for for it to be called poetry you must write in rhyme that's not true so uh, it the novel was published by mr henry fielding in 1742 and it is also called a picaresque novel picaresque novel is one uh, in which the Uh, unlike uh, the traditional or classical drama where the hero is of tall character or of high class uh, unlike that uh, the picaresque novel is one in which the hero belongs to lower class he belongs to lower strata okay joseph Hen- andrews is a poor man right uh, also uh, it should be registered in uh, the conversation that uh, this novel was written by henry fielding as a response to richard son's pamela we will talk about that what was richard sons pamela all about i will give you a brief introduction of that uh, richard son wrote a story uh, he richard son was also a contemporary of uh, henry fielding the name of the story is pamela pamela is a girl and uh, she is a very chaste girl uh, and uh, nothing and nobody can uh, take uh, her chastity away her boss whose name was mr b tried to seduce her uh, but she resisted and uh, she protected herself from the offer offers made by the boss uh, and she also got its reward in the shape that when the boss came to know that she was a very chaste and unwavering girl of great integrity uh, he proposed to her and they got married so uh, this novel teaches uh you the lesson that uh, if you remain chaste uh, your chastity can be a commodity which can be sold later as well so if he were not chaste her boss would not have married she is chaste 
देर फोर शी इज मैरिड बाई हर बॉस सो इफ यू क्रिएट आई एम सॉरी फॉर दिस रॉन्ग स्पेलिंग If you remain chaste, uh, it will be rewarded. It might be rewarded later on, right? Let's move to the next slide. Uh, excuse me, G. So let's talk about the characters of the uh, this novel. Uh, Joseph Andrew is the central character. He is the hero of this novel, and after that, Mr. Parson Adams. now this is the name of the person whose name is mentioned in the title of the long title of the novel right so parson adams is his friend and his mentor mentor is a teacher so joseph andrews was a student to parson adams and parson adams was a parson parson means padri and a parson is supposed to guide uh, his students uh, from religious point of view right from morality's point of view from the point of view of chastity and uh, mr Uh, Sir Thomas Booby is the uh, person uh, in whose house Joseph Andrews uh, does the work or does the employment, and his wife's name is Miss Lady Booby. And as the name Booby shows that she has big boobs, and is ko Urdu me kya the? Dudal mai. And English uh, students of English literature uh, should have the know how know how of Urdu as well. So she is an immoral woman. and she is quite young when her husband sir thomas booby died uh, in this uh, novel and uh, joseph andrews used to live in their home and he did, did employment there and he used to look after the animals of sir thomas booby and uh, <clears throat> while on one side parson adams wanted to teach uh, the principles of morality to joseph andrews uh but he was not available at his home he had joined uh, the employment at sir thomas booby's house and thomas booby's family had gone to london uh, for some uh, important task and they had also taken joseph andrews with them due to which parson adams could not teach him uh, therefore he could not uh, start the course the religious course that he was supposed to start right and uh, when they go to london there thomas booby dies and miss lady booby has complete opportunity of seducing joseph andrews she tries to uh, create a web and tries to hunt him tries to do sex with him she also entices him to have sex with him with her but uh, joseph andrews remains steadfast perseverant and resolute and determined he does not uh, fall uh, for those traps and his chastity is very strong he does not give in he does not lose right and uh, when he after repeated uh, efforts by miss lady booby uh, to seduce joseph andrews uh, he remains uh, unwavering and finally she becomes disappointed and throws him out of the house which means she sacks him okay and he is deprived of the job and not only job but also deprived of the lodgings of miss lady booby and he leaves her house and uh, he had a childhood friend whose name is fanny goodwill he she spent her childhood with uh, joseph andrews and they were supposed to get married but parson adams who is also the mentor or the teacher of joseph andrews stopped the two from getting married until uh, joseph andrews uh, had a good a job of his own until he had settled in his life uh, so they are engaged but are, they are waiting to be get to be got married now what uh, what does this story uh, have in common with pamela's story of richard richardson i want to create an analogy or association remember this novel henry fielding's joseph andrews was written in response to uh, richardson's pamela actually henry fielding criticizes richardson Uh, that uh, richardson showed pamela uh, to be a, 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 a utilitarian girl who uses her chastity her morality as a commodity just to win her boss favors like uh, boss would not have got married her if she had not proved chaste and she got married with the boss because he had a house he had a good income so to improve her life standard she got married with him 
uh, not for any other reason uh, it means he was greedy he was